Hello and welcome back to the Dividend Experiment, the channel that can help you build a portfolio that pays your bills. This is the latest in the new Look Is It Time To Buy series where I take a look into a stock and notify you guys of when I've added something to my watch list. Now that I'm starting from scratch with this portfolio, you might see some old favourites back again that are already owned in the old portfolio if they do dip back into the range of Dividend Experiment guidelines. Also, this video is simply a notification that I've added this company to my watch list rather than necessarily buying right now. If you want to see when I buy, exactly when I buy, the first place to check is Instagram, and I'll also put it on Twitter and Facebook if I remember, but I am pretty bad at remembering to use those platforms. The format of this new series will be fairly similar to the old, but let's get started. What kind of company is GlaxoSmithKline PLC? GlaxoSmithKline PLC engages in the development, manufacture and marketing of pharmaceutical products, vaccines, over-the-counter medicines and health-related consumer products in the United Kingdom and internationally. It operates through four segments, pharmaceuticals, pharmaceuticals R&D, vaccines and consumer healthcare. The company offers pharmaceutical products comprising medicines in the therapeutic areas such as respiratory, HIV, immunoinflammation, oncology, antiviral, central nervous system, cardiovascular and many more. It also provides consumer healthcare products in wellness, oral health, nutrition, skin health categories. The company offers its consumer healthcare products in the form of nasal sprays, tablets, syrups, toothpaste, toothbrushes, mouthwashes, lip balm, gummies and soft chews. The company has a good range of brands under its pharmaceuticals and consumer healthcare, which is quite appealing to investors like us on the dividend experiment that are looking for a stable payer. So what made this one come onto my radar of potential stocks? Let's evaluate using the dividend experiment guidelines. If you're new or you don't know what the rules are, I updated the rules of the dividend experiment, so you should check out the rules if you haven't caught up yet. I'll put one of those little cards up here. Firstly, the yield. As of making the video, GlaxoSmithKline is putting up a yield of 5.25%, which is a pretty significant yield. What makes it even better is that this is the first UK stock from the new portfolio watch list. So that means we don't need to pay that pesky withholding tax that comes with international companies. So what you see is what you get with a yield on this one. The next rule is to check if the company is trading at a lower price than it usually does and it looks at the 5 year average dividend yield. GlaxoSmithKline's 5 year average dividend yield is 5.22% and the current is just over that. So as of right now, GlaxoSmithKline is still within the rules at this present time. So far so good. Let's take a look at the PE ratio next. If we take a look over on Yahoo Finance, we can see a P.E. ratio of 10.91, which is well within the dividend experiment guidelines and pretty low really. But to know if it's low in respect to its industry, we need to look at its industry peers and competitors. So let's have a look at some of GSK's peers in the drug manufacturer sector. Pfizer has a P.E. ratio of 14.56. AstraZeneca has a P.E. ratio of 51.46. ABV Inc. has a P.E. ratio of 16.54. So in respect to these competitors, GSK or GlaxoSmithKline's P.E. ratio looks pretty appealing. The next rule is the payout ratio and you'll be happy to know that GSK has a safe payout ratio of 60.2%. Dividend experiment guidelines limit is 75% so this is well within the limit. The last rule of the dividend experiment is that its current ratio must be in line with its peers. GlaxoSmithKline has a current ratio of 0.96 so it can almost pay off all of its short-term liabilities, but not quite. So that's not an ideal situation, but let's compare to those previous competitors. Pfizer has a current ratio of 1.42. AstraZeneca has a current ratio of 0.82. AbV Inc. has a current ratio of 0.86. And with that, GlaxoSmithKline PLC passes the dividend experiment test. Let's take a look at the pros and cons of this company right now. Now, this new Is It Time To Buy series differs from the old stock of the month, as I'll be looking at four features of a stock. The moat, how safe is the dividend, catalysts, risks and threats. Let's start with the moat. GlaxoSmithKline's biggest attribute that gives it a moat is its market dominance and diversified offering. In the UK market for drug manufacturers, GSK is the second largest company and takes up a market share of 36.6%. The largest company in this space is AstraZeneca, which represents 55.8%. Then in third place is Hikma Pharmaceuticals, which takes up a tiny 3.2%. When a tiny number of companies, in this case two, take up such a large percentage or high percentage of market, it gives them more control over pricing, leading to, hopefully for them, more profits. 
It also becomes harder for new entrants as the barrier to entry can be quite high and it would take some disruptive innovation to enter the pharmaceutical market in the UK for sure. Morningstar, the stock market analysis company, is obsessed with modes and this is what they have to say about GSK's mode. Patents, economies of scale and a powerful distribution network support GlaxoSmithKline's wide moat. Glaxo's patent protected drugs carry strong pricing power which enables the firm to generate returns on invested capital in excess of its cost of capital. Further, the patents give the company time to develop the next generation of drugs before generic competition arises. While Glaxo holds a diversified product portfolio, there is some product concentration with the company's largest drug, Advair, representing just under 10% of total sales. It is expected that new products will mitigate the eventual generic competition that will probably be more gradual, given the complexity of creating generic respiratory drugs. Also, Glaxo's operating structure allows for cost-cutting following patent losses to reduce the margin pressure from lost high-margin drug sales. Overall, Glaxo's established product line creates the enormous cash flows needed to fund the average $800 million in development costs per new drug. In addition, a powerful distribution network sets up the company as a strong partner for smaller drug companies that lack Glaxo's resources. Glaxo's entrenched vaccines and consumer healthcare franchises create an added layer of competitive advantage stemming from cost advantages in creating vaccines and brand power in the consumer group. Is the dividend safe? Bearing in mind that the payout ratio and propensity for the management to pay dividends, the dividend can be considered safe. However, there's not much scope for dividend growth with this one. There have been several years where the management has maintained the dividend at current level without deciding to increase payments. Occasionally, there have been special dividends paid out to investors, so that's the biggest likelihood of an increase shareholders can really look forward to. At a current yield of over 5%, it's not so terrible if the dividend doesn't increase, but as the dividends continue to pay out without seeing any sort of dividend growth, it is something to watch out for. What about any catalysts for GSK? The most exciting catalyst for GSK at the moment is the anticipation of a coronavirus vaccine. Are we allowed to say that on YouTube yet and still be monetized? I'm not sure, but it's pretty hard to talk about a vaccine without using the word, so it'll have to be done. Personally, I'm completely out of my depth when I'm talking about vaccines and biology stuff, so I'll defer to their own research on this. Sanofi is collaborating with GSK on a COVID-19 vaccine candidate using the same, using the same recombinant protein-based manufacturing technology as one of Sanofi's seasonal influenza vaccines. The company's announced the start of their phase 2 clinical trial for their COVID-19 vaccine candidate in September, and they anticipate first results in early December 2020 to support the initiation of a pivotal phase 3 study before the end of the year. When creating a vaccine, there are five stages and they look like this. Stage 1, vaccines testing safety and dosage. Stage 2, vaccines in expanded safety. Stage 3, vaccines in large-scale efficacy tests. Stage 4, vaccines approved for early or limited use. And then stage 5, vaccines approved for full use. The numbers in the boxes are the number of companies that are their respective stage, according to the New York Times, as of October 16th. So the GSK-Sanofi combo isn't the furthest along, but vaccine production can be stumped at any time before stage 5, so it is all to play for. Overall, the vaccine isn't necessary for GSK to be an attractive defensive dividend payer, but would be a great bonus addition to its portfolio of offerings. Are there any risks? Yeah, there's certainly any risk to any stock that you might be inclined to buy, and GlaxoSmithKline is no exception. On the negative side, the risk-sensitive US Food and Drug Administration is generally only approving very safe drugs, or drugs in high need areas such as cancer. Also, managed care and pharmacy benefit managers have consolidated over the past decade, now using their growing size to demand lower drug prices and reduce coverage for less innovative drugs, forcing drug firms to push for true innovation and reducing the power of Glaxo's distribution networks. In terms of emerging markets and a geographic standpoint, Glaxo is strategically branching out from developed markets into emerging markets. While the fast-growing emerging markets will help support long-term growth and diversify cash flows beyond developed markets, this strategy is likely to create some challenges, like the potential legal violations that arose in early 2013 in China. In addition, lockdowns and a focus on addressing immediate coronavirus needs have kept patients away from doctors' surgeries, and that has had repercussions for GSK's business. As of right now, I'm not super excited about GSK, and I see it as a safe enough play to get a decent dividend income, but I'm not anticipating it to be the world leader of the vaccine or anything like that, but I don't think the company needs it to still be an attractive play. 
Overall, it looks like a defensive player with some opportunity to the upside. However, I'm more excited by the prospects of companies like AbV and PFE, unless they come up with a vaccine. So I'll keep this as a moon position rather than a planet. And there you have it. Of course, there's much more to know about this company, but I'd like to think I can provide a snapshot of information that you can base your research off. If you think that the dividend experiment is interesting, I need you to do three things. First, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can stay informed for every video and update. I'll show you my portfolio every month, which stocks I've added to my watch list, and more interesting videos in between. Second, if you're a new investor, I highly recommend the Dividend Academy. It's completely free to join, gives you bite-sized lessons to get started investing, with none of that nonsense that others try and sell you for sky-high fees. Finally, open up a brokerage and get started building a portfolio that pays your bills. I have some that I recommend in the description, and some will even give you a free share to start you off. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next video. See ya!